Alonzo. <laughs> <laughs> to start off with that, Alonzo. I had a little, uh, little something behind that, Alonzo. Yeah, we go way back, and I'm just going to open right up with Alonzo is one of these people I have a real admiration for, and almost like it's, I've never told you this before, almost like a, a parent. To, to because I, it, it's, I'm no, trying, I know what I'm, you're I'm saying. Tra- you I know do? what you're saying. You yeah, do? yeah, I, because I'm, you were a veteran when I came in, and I met you. I was a rookie. You were a veteran. You gave me some uh, good tips. You connected me with one of the most important people in my career. Right? Okay. Oh, you remember and, that? I, oh, absolutely. I remember when man. we had the discussion, and yeah, you said something absolutely. like, "I want this." You well, know <laughs> you know, you know what's funny? I passed on that connection to another person, and then that other person's that... so famous that I got that person got rid of me. <laughs> Did you know that? I'm too small for her now. The business manager, I yeah. swear to God. So that big person is now with her, and I'm yeah. out. Well, that I mean, but that how that happened? Well, you know, it, <laughs> you're it, still in though. Yeah, I'm still there. Oh, I'm man. still there. But you know, one of the, the things is when uh, she was about to blow up. I mean, I, mean, I literally you saw mean her. the comic or the our comic, business manager because <laughs> she now I blew saw up. Her, we'd been friends from early from the the baby steps of her career. Wow! And this was right before her first big movie came out. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just said, do you have anyone who's going to help you handle your business? Like I said to you. Right. And yeah. she said no. And she said she didn't know. But, and I just gave her a number. And they hit it off. And then her career exploded. Oh, my and it God. Was, and, you know, just like you helped me. I don't know if you know this feeling. But sometimes you help someone. You do something. And you're like, that's what I was supposed to do for them. Yeah, like in their in their arc in when, their when you life won last whatever. comic standing, I went to the right. audience. I don't know if you knew that. I was in the audience. No, I was I just didn't like, know. yeah, I was a proud papa, yeah. like going, hey, you know, I was, you know, I kind of gave him a little nudge, and you know what I mean. And no, you, you know. no, that was uh, invaluable. And and for your listeners who don't know what we're talking about, it was a business manager, and and Shu saw something in me mm-hmm. that yeah. I was going to make some money, right. And yeah. he said, you need someone to help Be you ready. handle it because yeah. as comics, you know, we travel all the time and you got this, you're, you're, you become a corporation and you got taxes and you got different cities. It, it, it's, it's a business. Yeah, we're, we're each our own business. There's a lot to take care of, but we are our own business. You introduced me to someone who not only took care of it, but who I could trust 100%. Yeah. Because she had much bigger clients. If she was going to steal, I said, you steal from the ones who won't notice. Like, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll notice. I need the money. But you got these multi, multi-millionaires. You could just siphon off the top. They'll never know. They'll and, never get it from uh, you. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, from me, they'll know. From me, I'll miss a payment right away. But but um, she has been invaluable in, yeah. in my career. I was with her for 30 years. Take, yeah. And yeah, she just decided, and, uh, I don't know, whatever, she got busy. She's a lot of famous people now. Yeah, now she's, it's, she's it's a whole it. different thing. Here, here's the thing. Now, it's mindset, though. The mindset that I first got when I did my first business manager, it's a big decision because you're turning your life over to someone. Yeah. You're allowing them to handle all of your finances and all even calling for the electric bill. They, yeah, they well, do stuff that people don't realize, especially when you have a personal boutique like that. That's what I was trying to turn you on to. Yeah. It's like it became like I didn't even know you needed one. <laughs> they don't tell you. By the way, we don't go to college for comedy. Right. Nobody teaches. There's nobody. You this there's part. no mentors nobody out there. You, you might find a few. Like I was a little bit of one for you, and, and, and you're just out there exploring, and it's scary. Well, the funny thing is, I refer to her as my paid wife. Yeah. And a friend of mine's wife said, oh, no, she's better than the wife. I wouldn't do half the stuff she does. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's more. You got more than the wife right there, you know. Because it's it's funny sometimes. Like the big stuff you know, right? It's the you're, paid wife, too, because you don't get don't have sex. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that, you know, <laughs> so that like, would ruin it. Yeah. But, you know, you, you you know about the stuff like taxes, right, yeah. and your income yeah. and your, your profit loss statement and stuff like that. But then the things happen like I lost my cell phone. I left it on an airplane. And then you get a call. Got you a new phone. Go to the store. Pick it up. That's the stuff that Man, you know. Right. You can't. That's that's part of the business, right? And that's part of being who we are. It's so difficult to go on the road. You're going to lose a cell phone. Your things are right. going to happen to your home when you're gone. All of those little minutia. I don't think there's anyone or any career that can compare to ours as far as being individuals. Yeah, even musicians who I work that's with right. a ton of musicians yeah. and I love them. They have the band. 
Exactly. They have the band. So even though they're and the band manager, right? Their business Roadies. might be similar in yeah. the sense of their, you know, the 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 leader of the band or the singer or whoever the star is. They're running everything, but they still have people around them. Whereas when we travel, when we do things, it, it's a solitary. I won't say lonely because it's not lonely, but it's a solitary existence. Yeah, I I wander into lonely sometimes where you're just going. Here I am in another town that I don't know anyone, or or you look up. Do you look up people when you go to a town? Like a, I have like a little list of oh here's my Austin people. Yeah, here's my Raleigh North Carolina yeah, I people. Have you some, look them up. Sometimes I have friends and and yeah, come into a town. I'll hit them up. Like this weekend, I'm going to Cleveland, and I got some friends in Cleveland and Akron that are like, "Yeah, we're gonna come down Saturday," and yeah. and that kind of stuff is great. I it's never the the isolation part of it has never bothered me on yeah. occasion, rare occasion. But I'm like, man, it's quiet. You know, sometimes you love isolation. <laughs> to be in a hotel room that's paid for, and you're like, you know, you don't have to do your laundry. I mean, it's like sometimes it's great to be you know, isolated. You know what I get to do in a hotel that I don't get to do at home? What's that? Sleep late. Especially now, I've got a dog, right? So, oh, yeah. so he's up, he's oh. up seven, seven thirty. He's like, "Let's go!" And I love my dog. My dog's the best thing I ever did, and, and we go. But there's something to be said for when you can, like, yeah, I can roll over. I don't have to walk. What do you do when morning. you're on the road, though, with Hulk? He stays. The Hulk stays at a place called Paradise Ranch, uh, dog hotel and water park. And he lives better than you. He lives better than me. <laughs> Hulk is doing fine. He, they really, they, they're such a fantastic place because they, they actually have a water park for the dogs. Wow. You know, in L.A., it's hot in the summer. But the, the thing I think the best thing is there's no kennels. They have, a, they have a house and dog beds in the house, and the dogs just come in at night and find, like, their own little oh, nest we, where they want to hang out. I didn't think this is the direction we were going, but I need this because my dog, the problem is that we have a rescue. Uh-huh. And you don't know what they come with. Yeah, that's true. You that's I mean? true. Rescues. Four, four years old. They've already got the PTSD from being right. in from being in the joint. Yeah. And she actually has pecs like she was in the joint, like yeah. working out. <laughs> I mean, this is part pit bull, a lot of pit bull. Yeah. People are afraid of the pit bull, but here's the problem. Great with people bad with animals yeah then it's probably not going to work it's not going to work right no if yeah. they have to be they they actually i joked about it that it's like one of these high-end kindergartens where you have to yeah. bring your dog and your dog has to hang out for a few hours and they have to see how your dog is with other dogs and this and that and i don't i don't know if they have accommodations for that for a dog that doesn't uh, get along because yeah. everything i see Open. Is all the dogs are together and it's open. And they're yeah. okay with one another. That's crazy. They're yeah. like a community. Yeah. Maybe give them a little pot or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's some edibles. I, don't know. I mean, something's. I, I can't believe that dogs would get along like that and living in space where they're. That's not who they live with. I mean, they're suddenly. Yeah. They, in with, imagine us being with strangers. I. Well, we. Out. You know, we are early in our career. You remember back in the. You did it the more condo. than me. The you con- did it more than me. The, the comedy, comedy condo. condo. Is it a thing of the past? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know of any club. Imagine there's still I, some clubs I, that probably. might do it. But what happens now when you're on the road? They use local people for the opening and feature spot. Right. So that it's not like when, like when I started, and definitely for you back in the day, back in the '80s and the heyday. You just went to a town, right? And they had a condo or For three apartment people. or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The headliner got the room with the TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, I pulled rank many a time. I go, whoa, 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 cowboy! You know they get there before you. I, oh no, 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 no! Get out of that room. That's 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 my. Yeah, room. you knew it. You, the yeah. room with the TV. The headline. Yeah. That's the headline. Some room, of them ended you? up knowing it anyway and wouldn't even bother to do that, right. to put their stuff in the room that they knew was the headliner room. Or sometimes the club would tell them that's the headliner room. The worst is was when you had the comics who were passing through town, but they knew the condo or they knew the code to get in or something, and they would just crash Flop. there like oh, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, and Absolutely. and you're like, get the hell out of here. Get you out know? of here. This is mine this week. Get out of yeah, here, Yeah, now pig. they got to clean it again, you oh, know, because they clean it on Monday when the comics leave, yeah. right? And then somebody's just, oh, this is my flop house until oh, Thursday. Yeah. And these you know? were never the people, like, there was never a Howie <laughs> Mandel that was, you know, that was clean and OCD. No, I think that's the reason Howie became Howie. I think Howie, <laughs> he probably Howie did a hit a couple comedy of condos. comedy condos and said, oh. okay, I'm not touching anything ever again in my life. <laughs> How about the one down that they had it for the La Jolla Comedy Store? Did you ever do that one? No, nah, I didn't do that one. Oh, my but... God. I think I found Robin Williams' pubic hair from the 70s. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was disgusting. But they would just run the comedians in in these places. But 
it, like I said, it's the most unique. Of, I can't think of any other art form or any other business that's as unique as this business. Yeah, you know, uh, you got to love it, right? You got to love it. I mean, that's what I tell. No, yeah. what I tell people is if you want to do this, any creative endeavor, but this one in particular, you have to love it. Because if you don't love it, you won't put up with the shit. <laughs> you won't deal with, you know you know what I mean? You got to yeah. deal with a lot of stuff. We've all done it, right? Like, like I just finished a run four weeks of jazz cruises through the Caribbean with the most incredible musicians in the world. I've been doing that gig for years. And then I come home for a week. Then I go to Bermuda and host a comedy weekend in Bermuda. And of course, everybody, wow, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, but you want to go to Bermuda. You don't want to go to St. Paul, Minnesota. You don't, you don't want to yeah. do the Bismarck weekend. You got <laughs> got to do the Bismarck weekend to earn the Bermuda weekend, right? Yeah, that's just, a few Bismarcks to get to the Bermuda. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that place is expensive. Oh, Bermuda's Bermuda's comical. It's the, eating, how, how eating expensive Bermuda, it is. Yeah, I, eating in Bermuda is Bermuda's the only place that you go to New York to save money. <laughs> you know, man, let me go to Manhattan where it's cheap, where I can afford a sandwich. <laughs> Uh, is, is this in euros? I've got what? What is no, this? No, no, they, I mean, they it, mainly they have their own money, but they mainly work on the U.S. dollar. I know, what I'm saying yeah. that like, I'm doing the calculate. I'm looking at this bill, going, "That cannot be that high." Oh yeah, yeah. You're like, this can't. This is what is this yen? Yeah, people are, <laughs> p- people are afraid of crime on the streets. The, 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 here, they they rob you with a cash register, <laughs> like openly, right to your face. They will take that. It's a, uh, but it is a beautiful area. Beautiful, beautiful I island. Love, I, the nicest people in the world. Nicest and, people, you know, yeah. Breakfast will be thirty five dollars. Favorite place, <laughs> favorite place you've been. I oh, mean, including man. that. I mean, so many. You know, I um, know it's tough to kind of define. Or the play. one that stays in my mind, the one place I would go back to and spend my own money, and you know, it's a comic. That's saying a lot. Yeah, because they treat us on a lot of things. That's like included. Well, yeah. your meals are in, well, some meals when you're at the club. The, all the hotel are and all, but Cape yeah. Town, South Africa. <gasps> wow, have you been there? No. I mean, it was it was. Nine Eleven happened. I had to cancel. Yeah, I was I, too scared to travel. There me? were a couple of times. There were, there were a couple of times they threatened to take me to you know various gigs in Africa. And the Cape Town Comedy Festival came through. Oddly enough, right before the pandemic, like I literally flew home from Africa, got off the plane, and people were like, "Did you bring toilet paper?" Like it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it's just a beautiful place. Um, there's there's a plateau in the middle of the city. From there, you can see the entire city. The city's kind of built around from this plateau out to the coast. Uh, beautiful beaches, a waterfront area that's amazing. You can walk around. We we went to a we didn't go on a full safari, but we went to a safari park and you know. It's all included in your trip. This was all part of the oh, gig. Man. It was all part of doing the. the and con- they I think paid you lasted, to be there as part of the festival. Yeah, I want to say it was either eight. Or eleven days. I forget how long it was. Ooh. I think it was eight days. It was it was enough time though. It was enough time to really soak it in and uh, just an amazing place. The only thing I didn't do, I didn't go to um, Mandela's prison cell mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I didn't want to be. I could. I said the next time I come here, I'll go. I didn't want that down. I didn't want that energy. You know, to yeah. cloud everything that, else yeah. I had felt. That's a heavy, dark. That's energy. a heavy yeah. trip. When that, you think you know, about what he went through, yeah, that's as heavy as it gets. Right. And, and but but it's also a very spiritual story. Oh, it's absolutely. Like I mean, probably the most. There, there's a beauty to it, and I understand yeah. why yeah. people would go. Right. But I was like, I'll come back here one day, and I'll go. But for for now, I just want the uh, the beauty and the relaxation. And it's the, the same with the Holocaust. You I know? mean, it's real. I remember watching Schindler's List. I couldn't even move the leave the movie theater. I was so blown away, devastated, and I've never seen it again. Yeah, and and I don't want to see it again. The um I, the African American History Museum in D.C. is like that. Oh yeah, it, especially for you. Yeah, I'm only fourteen percent. It's it's, it's, <laughs> it's it's literally you start at the Middle Passage from slavery. Oh. But the amazing thing about that museum is the the first the historical part ends with Barack Obama. Mm. So you actually walk from slavery to Barack Obama being president. What and a you story. talk about you talk about moving. They actually have a place for you to just sit and like take it all just to mm. feel it mm. before you continue or see any more at a museum. It, it's 
that was a fascinating. The, the audience thing. that goes to that or the patrons is it mostly black, fifty fifty? I'd say mostly black people. But, yeah, but definitely a lot of white people take it in, and um, I, I would imagine there's a lot of foreign visitors. You know, I don't know if it's still there. For a long time, you had to book in advance to get in. Like mm. you, you know, mm. you had to make a reservation. Uh, but it, it's an amazing experience. Then when you go to the entertainment part. Some of the really cool thing. One of the coolest things there is they have Flip Wilson and Geraldine. Well, they were the same person, right? But I right. mean, they a lot show of people both. don't know that. Yeah, Flip li- Wilson you know. was one of the great entertainers. I'd say late sixties, early seventies. Yeah, he yeah. has his own show, yep. a variety show hosted by an African American. Never done before. Not only but. hosted by a little known fact, owned by. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he was and, a great and at businessman. At that time, for a black person to own their own TV show yeah. was unheard of, and he owned that show. And Geraldine was his famous character that now people would lose their minds. Oh my God, she's he's he's a drag queen. He's wearing you know he's wearing. I t- Craig, they canceled. I don't know about you, but I watch Geraldine every week. No influence whatsoever. <laughs> Never wanted to hook up with Geraldine. Just just kept laughing. Never wanted to dress like little, Geraldine. Nah, no need. Never no, wanted to have any of your p- body no parts taken away. Farrah Fawcett influenced me in the 70s. <laughs> Strong influence from Charlie's Angels. Nothing from Geraldine. Yeah. But but that's at the museum and, and um, just a lot of things like that. The mothership from Parliament and all these, you know, oh, black wow. entertainment historical uh Events and and props. The and mothership people. from Parliament. I yeah. just remembered that. Yeah, is that what uh, the Austin uh, Joe Rogan? Is that what that's named after? Uh, no, with with Rogan, it's his fascination with uh, outer space and aliens. And, okay, and so on. But um, well, that was the original alien. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Parliament was that was a different. different what a world. jam! We should be. Yeah. I should. I should just play that music for yeah. everyone right now. I don't think a lot of people <laughs> know Parliament. That was funk. That was that. I was well. You know what they know, and before it's really funny. before Snoop, before they know, uh, uh, people know samples, but a lot of people don't know. Yeah, not just the music, but the story. It was like an entire story. Yeah. there were characters. They were, you know, the whole band was characters. Yeah, that was a different, definitely a different. You era know what? That should music. be a documentary. There has to be I'm, a document. I watch sure, a lot of documentaries. There, I'm that sure there's people be one. working on it, and you know, have George Clinton wrote a book about it. But I'm uh-huh. sure there's people. It, it's probably one of those that different people are trying it. They're bidding on it because it's a lot. You yeah, know? yeah, it's a lot, and really unique. Like there's, Super not, there's unique. nothing unique, and, like and it, yeah. so much grew out of it. You right, know, so many artists came they, out they of owe that their band careers or, the, to, or yeah, just the yeah. funk that he did was yeah, yeah. Awesome. Who, who was your who was your all time is it a traditional one like a prior, or or do you have someone may, maybe not as known, your all time kind of guide into comedy? Uh, it have to be Carlin. Really? Yeah, oh. and 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 you listen, uh, Pryor, and I know we can't name him anymore, but Cosby and Carlin. <laughs> we can't name yeah. him anymore. Well, you know, he honestly he proved to be. It's so disappointing. He proved to be a shitty person. You know? Yeah. And that, that, yeah. It takes away from the from the art he created. This is very you difficult with anything. I mean, Pete Rose, you can't you know, Babe Ruth. Separate I mean, them. You know what I mean? You, yeah. You've got to. There's a separate conversation. Right. And but and it's it's like you almost have to turn to everybody who's listening to go. Forgive me for this, but he had an influence on me. Well, he you can't did. deny Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Because Michael you, Jackson, you know. like one of the most biggest influences of all time. Right. I don't like his career outside of you right. know his private career. Right. Really, really does not connect. And that's with me. what we're we're finding out about people, unfortunately. Yeah. But but I always consider those the three, right? Carlin, Cosby, and Pryor. Mm. And I was a Carlin guy because I like topical. Because I okay. like, yeah. You know, I like what's going on. I like commentary on the world, and mm. that was Carlin's thing. And you know, and everyone who knows Carlin, I always say, you know, if Carlin was alive today, it would kill him. Mm. Oh, yeah. everybody, <laughs> says, everybody says, oh, now Kelly, his daughter, is trying to talk yeah. about their, their AI wants to, oh, my uh, God, that, it's awful. They yeah. want to do something that with That AI thing was a crime against nature. Yeah, when well, she's you really can't. putting her foot down. Uh, As with, well with she that. should. That, yeah. That's, you can't, you know, the sad thing about a comic, and again, I like I say, I work with brilliant musicians, and I love musicians, yeah. but music lives on. A comic's act dies with the comic. Mm. It's true. 
you know, nobody, you can't do Carlin. You can't do Patrice O'Neill. You can't do Rickles. You can't do any, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like these are icons, right? So many of them. And, and you could, the list goes on and on. Yeah. You, it's not like, you know, Miles Davis where you can, you can play Miles Davis's music, yeah. right? You can play Prince's music. You know, you ain't going to play it like Prince, but you could play, you know what I mean? But it also but holds with, up better too. Like a topical yeah. thing won't hold up for 40 years from now, or it could. Yeah, Carlin's the one example yeah, Carlin where, where the topical, it still goes on today. He could be saying these words right. today, the, which and is unfortunate, just crazy. Unfortunately, yes. so much of it is still true. Yeah, of course, the corporation. You know, that, and all, That's yeah. the part. Like so much of it he saw yeah. before anybody. Yeah. He saw before anybody how much, how bad the society. I remember famously Carlin said that America has become a strip mall that starts in New York and ends in L.A. <laughs> And it's like, man, were you 50 years ahead of your time with that one? Yeah. And you look around. If you, were, if you go around America, that's exactly what it looks like. Well, we do it, right? right. We when do. You go, when you hit a club, you're like, where am I? Am I in Addison, Texas, or Richmond, Virginia? or, or It doesn't matter. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> it, uh, it, unfortunately. And by the way, I go in my hotel room, and I don't even care about the scene things. You, do, you don't even know I, anymore. I've just seen it all. And there's nothing that's going to astound me, I think. Right. You know it, what I miss? Maybe a natural, maybe something natural. Like Yeah, a, yeah, there's still nature. I was going to say Mount Rushmore. It's not natural either. <laughs> <laughs> but there might be some things like that or whitewater rafting mm. or something that's really um, exhilarating and you're in nature, which is like God's work. You know what I mean? But strip mall is not God's work. No, and, I, miss, you know, I miss local newspapers. Uh, Early in my career. And the USA Today. When you hit a town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you hit a town, I hit a town, that would be the first thing I do. I get a local newspaper yeah. just to see what's going on. Because that night, if you talk about right. something that's going on in that town, they love you. They're like, wow. I know. He knew that, you know, Joe Simmons drove into City Hall, you know, and it's like, oh, oh yeah. man, I know Joe. Are you kidding? <laughs> I was just, I had lunch with Joe. I, last used, I used to read the newspaper on the stage, <laughs> I read the sheriff's blotter. And by the way, you don't even need any jokes. The sheriff's blotter in small towns is hilarious. It's unbelievable. A pack of cigarettes was stole out of, stolen out of yeah. Kevin O'Malley's Tundra. There was actually tundra. a story about the comic reading the news last week on the stage. I was like, hey, I'm following Shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a lot of comics come from pain. Yes. And first of all, I'm going to ask you the theory on that. Do you think the comics do need to come from pain? I don't know if they need to, but... It is a, uh, mm, I don't know, is it catharsis? Would that be the right word? Yeah, um, that's somewhat, yeah. From the from the pain, like a way to deal with it, you know. And, and again, this is something you have in common with music, right? How many, not even, not just songs, but genres, you know, the blues. What does the blues come from? It's Intense pain. pain. Yeah. And a way to deal with it, you know. Oh, um, it's so, so beautiful. It's so connected. Yeah. So comedy. Soul. Literally connected yeah. to his soul, and that's where it comes from. Yeah. So for a lot of us, yeah, it comes from some kind of. It, it's either pain or being a misfit. Sometimes it's being yeah. a misfit. Yeah. A you, misfits. you don't necessarily have to be depressed, but you didn't fit in. You, you, you know, and, and it, it, I would go. I'll probably go like ninety percent. There's one comic I'm thinking of that does appears to not have it. I want to see if you get it on the first answer. It just appears to not have had any of the angst or worries or. No poverty and famous, yeah, yeah, very mm. famous, and and uh, it's just uh, somebody that does just n doesn't seem to have ha ever had a problem. I have no idea. Really? Who? Who? I would... thought this would be an immediate answer. Who? Anybody want to guess out there? No, no. Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard. You know, you know it why just it doesn't, doesn't seem like he's got something right. to get over. It does seem like he's very clinical. He's he's like really brilliant at what he does, but. Yeah, but it. I don't feel the pain. I don't feel the need to. You know, there was a. a he's the comic. opposite. He's like, don't bring your therapy to the stage. Right. You know. I can't remember who it was, but there was a comic, and they were talking about Jerry Seinfeld. They were talking about the same thing about comedy coming from pain, and yeah. they said, "Well, you know, in Seinfeld's world, that's the pain, right? The fact that the the drug anxiety, is the, the drug is at the pharmacy being above you." Like for him, yeah. that was a problem. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? Like, like, and and the guy, what the person doing it wasn't knocking him. He was just saying that. Yeah, same here. Yeah, we have different levels of of pain or or anger or annoyance or whatever. And he said, you know, in Seinfeld's world, 
these were the things that were annoying. So maybe that's true. I, it's hard for me to comment on him because he is one of the few that I've never met. Really? Never met him. That's nope. interesting. Never never cross paths. Even in, in the car world, because I'm a car nut and yeah, he's he famously is a Porsche nut. And right. actually, he I don't know if he still does. He stored his cars. It's L.A. He had a car place not far from a friend of mine's business. And he was like, yeah, I just saw him, just saw him. You know, and it would I'd be like, ah, I missed him. Yeah. So... Well, I, I mean, it didn't, it didn't pop into my head right away. I watched him interviewed about this, and I just, you know, not, not to talk about him, but I'm going to talk about us. Is you and I had to get over some things, but one thing that I, when I mentor people, that I tell them is, that I think you need to work on your stuff before you bring it to the stage. The stage is not your therapy. It's, it's like you know something. It is now. That it's what it is now. What does that mean? There's a generation of comics that are doing their therapy on stage yeah. and I admire the ones who can make it funny. I'm going to debate you. I'm going to debate okay. you. I think they're making it funny because they have processed enough off stage. Either they're sober they're maybe, or, or maybe they've gone through some rehabilitation, therapy, whatever it is. When you bring it to the stage, the audience is uncomfortable. Like if I, I, I remember when I got divorced for it and people are like, I couldn't even say the word. You couldn't say it in the 60s yeah. and 70s. You literally, there were no characters mm. on television that were divorced. But if I say it now, I'm so clean and healed that anything that comes out of my mouth doesn't sound bitter, doesn't sound like it's rooted in resentment. And I just think if you bring that, then you can have fun. You can okay, go with all so these different colors. You, let yeah. me ask you about this. Because yeah. two award-winning comedy specials, and to me, they weren't necessarily as much funny as they were as, uh, as cathartic or whatever. Hannah Gatsby and Jared Carmichael. Okay. I watched, I watched uh, yeah, both. Yeah. Well, I will tell you. Not exactly a barrel of laughs. That's what I was about to get to. <laughs> I was about to get to that. So isn't it two different genres then? That's a different genre. That's well, a, no, that's a because processing. They won, that's a, they won all the awards that does in not, comedy. Oh, that doesn't matter. No, because that's they just can, somebody that well, deems them to well, be the other award because they, they were brave enough to bring this to the. Right. There's a whole other reasons for your virtue signaling and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's it. who gets awards does not matter to me. Yeah, who's but, making you but, laugh? Right, but this is the thing, though. This is the thing, though. People gravitated to what they did. Yeah, you know. So now I've seen people do it better. And do it funnier, and you know, I mean, who am I to knock either one of them? You know, they they did their own thing; they right. had their own success. Absolutely. But but that's what I'm talking about, though. There are more and more comics I'm seeing bringing that to the stage. And as someone who I started out telling personal stories, you know, funny stories about growing mm -hmm. up, yeah. parent, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Then I started. I got to a point. I found the world funnier than me, mm -hmm. and that's when I switched to doing topical stuff. Mm. Now, I am so tired of our society not moving forward that I want to figure out how to do personal again, but on a much deeper level. And I haven't found that yet because I want to go into the places where I am cracked and broken. So I admire the comics who can do that. Um, Neil Brennan is really good at it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know Neil has worked on and off stage on Neil a ton, but Neil is, I think he's very good at explaining and making funny how his mind works. Um, I think if people are uncomfortable, I'm just thinking about the audience, if they're uncomfortable, they need the comfort of knowing you're okay. Yeah, but if they're uncomfortable, they're reacting. That's okay. That's it's, a, it, you they, know, so I'm it's okay. okay that they react, and I, it's okay that they're uncomfortable. Mind. But when you're not come from a place of um, security, making, you know, I, I, just think it's, I just think it's more impactful if you have that confidence of knowing I'm okay, I'm not going to blow my brains out right now. Right. No, they don't want to see suicide on stage. And that happens. And they don't, yeah, I know. And I know. There are and comics they don't, that they do that. Yeah. They don't want to hear you, you know, this was your last show. You yeah, know? Right. And they don't know. They don't want that. But, but that would be award winning, by the way. So I mean, shot yeah. <laughs> they yeah. would have, literally, they would have won. You win can only do one show, though. That's, yeah, that's just, the agent. It's my the last agency shot. managers. No pun intended. Would, the agents would shot. hate it because they're like, well, we can't sell that. <laughs> we can't sell. He only did it once. He oh, did. no. You know what they would do? They would have make it a series. <laughs> who's next for the suicide? Let's go. Who's, who's next? Um, I'm trying to remember his name. He did the one man show called Addiction. He's from uh, Mark Lundholm. Oh, yeah, sure. 
Yeah. You he, talk about someone. His who, whole career is based on, his entire but, career is based on talking about addiction. But the brilliance of it to me is he found a way to talk about addiction so that people who were not addicts understood it. Absolutely. And that is a tough thing to, to get into that mind. It brings my point up, though. To get into that mind. Yeah, he's, he's, in he's a guy who re- he's in was in recovery. Exactly but, uh, right. but not every. Not everyone is. Some of them, I think, they're doing their therapy sessions on stage. Yeah, and I, I just think that it's more effective if, like I said, if he has such security because of yeah. what of the steps that he's worked and the program he's worked yeah. and deprogramming those the, those old thoughts that that lead to drinking and alcohol. Right. And speaking of that, we talk a lot about the turnaround in life here, and you and I have had a lot of turnarounds. Yes. Like, what do you think is the most profound turnaround that you've had, where you're at a bottom? Well, for me, it would have to be recovery. Right. Because without my recovery and for for your listeners who don't know, it's not a secret. I've been in recovery uh, 35 years, uh, timed it terribly, by the way. Horrible timing. I, I can't. Had, hear, I can't had, I gone, had I gone into rehab directly from last comic standing, you know how big a star I would have been if I literally walked from last comic standing into rehab. And they had rehab shows. I could have kept going on TV. Yeah, I went went Dr. Into, Drew. They'd exactly. Be, I, would have went, I wouldn't even be talking they, to you your now. your contract. Shoot. You wouldn't even have my number. That's how big I'd be had I timed my recovery better. You know, horrible timing. <laughs> I'd ask you for your business manager's <laughs> exactly. number. Exactly. But no, that you know why? Because, um, and you know my story. I'll tell it real quick for your listeners. I was an airplane mechanic, right? Yeah. I had a career in aerospace. Um Bottomed out on cocaine in the eighties. The, the yeah, it was. I was the cocaine timeline from cocaine in eighty to crack in eighty eight when I got alcohol in too. recovery. Alcohol was a constant with yeah. all of it. But anyway, I went to recovery. I went to a place called Studio Twelve, oh. and I always say that the stars went to Betty Ford, the crew <laughs> went to Studio Twelve. I was with the the makeup artists and the camera people, and but had I not been around those people, yeah. I never would have thought of entertainment as as real. See, because I come from a place, mm-hmm. you know, where you watch movies, you watch TV, you never think of working like how do you you don't you don't even think of how do you get into that, right? I know a lot of people come to LA with that dream, yeah. but I was in LA in the 80s when this used to be a ton of manufacturing and regular real work was in LA. I don't know when you moved here, but in the 80s, late 80s, there was yeah. real work here and that's what people did. So had I not been around these people who made a living creatively and told me, yeah, you could do it, then I may have never found it. I may have never found stand-up without that. So um, so that would definitely be the most uh, most profound turnaround in my life. And a cocaine is literally an accelerator. Yeah, yeah. And, I wonder and, how, and they get reco- how it works today. With the, uh, the, They're more into pot and edibles and things like that. Well, the the harder drugs now. I mean, fentanyl is oh, is yeah. the fentanyl is a dangerous one because fentanyl is Russian roulette. Oh yeah, you know fentanyl is the one hit and you're dead. Number of comics passed yeah, away it, and, in one and, night, and no Took intention, them all out. right? Yeah. No intention of it. They you just think, oh, I'm gonna do some blow or I'm gonna do some this or that, and a lot of times people don't even know it's laced with fentanyl. No, and then boom, you you know, and there's no. There were three comics in one night. Yeah, right? Said the yeah, same they were party. doing some and one cocaine almost died. And, yeah, yeah, it was it was horrible. Yeah. Um but I, that I happens. can't believe you know. Look, I did my share, and I yeah, know, I was an addict and everything else. I can't imagine though thinking to myself. I mean, we all are out of it. And things right. like that. I can't imagine thinking this could be my death. Well, you don't, and and you you know it, it's one thing if you're a hardcore drug addict, you're shooting up drugs, and you're you know. Right. living that life, then you know that death is always right there. Right there, yeah. But when you're young or you're you're at a party or you're at even a Hollywood party or, or this or that, and there's, you know, some cocaine being passed around or whatever, you know, there's, there's all kind of synthetic stuff around today that I never try. I don't know nothing right, about. Right, right. But you don't think that, oh, this might be laced and kill mm-hmm. me. And also it's age, right? When you're in your your teens, 20s, even to an extent your 30s, you're indestructible. Indestructible, yeah. You're indestructible. That's the you, mindset. You never think yeah. of anything as this is going to kill me. Even with you eating. Know? even the, I'll eat whatever I want. Well, right? I yeah. used to be able to. You know? <laughs> exactly. It, yeah. I had a good run of eat whatever I want. <laughs> now, a good now, run. Wasn't it great? Oh, man. Not now, a thought. No. no at, 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 at any time. <laughs> 
Anytime. I ate so late at night. 1 a.m. Let's have a pizza. Yeah, why not? And it went away. I can still eat pizza at 1 a.m. It just ain't going away. That's going to be there for a while. I did it the other day. (laughs) I went on a binge. Do you have what's called, everyone is listening, it's called a rider. Do you have a rider? You have a rider, right? I want to hear your rider. My rider is nothing. I've never developed. Same here. I've never developed a bunch of things. As a matter of fact, I did a show at the Stanley Hotel. Tell people what the rider is, though. The rider is... When you're performing stuff you want in the green room. That's it. Yeah. I want this type of snack or this <laughs> type of drink or this, that. And me, it's like coffee, fruit, and chocolate. Is, okay. That's pretty right. much that's you. I'm good. Coffee, you know? fruit, and chocolate. All right. Uh, I did a show at the Stanley Hotel made famous in, by The Shining and everything. And it's cla- oh. they claim it's haunted. And you yeah. go in the green room yeah. and they have the, the stuff for the ghost was more than I got in my <laughs> rider. The ghost had like top shelf whiskey, cigars, Just food. I was like, wait a minute, this the hilarious. ghost has a better <laughs> I gotta tell my manager to talk to the ghost. He's... Yeah. Well you can put whatever you want in them and sometimes yeah. they'll honor it. Yeah. But I got a case. I couldn't believe how many they gave me. I like food bars, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I'm in denial. I think if you get it at Whole Foods, it's gotta be good for you. Right. Right. So therefore, I can eat as many as I want. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, they're filled with chocolate, you know, <laughs> chocolate-covered pretzels, you know, but, but it's called yeah. something. Right. And I ate, I'm not exaggerating, I spent four days eating these late at night because these are, oh, I just kept doing it. Mm. I gained 13 pounds mm. in three days. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's, like, it's, 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 it's not good. Well, it's, but plus you do a, I don't want to call it emotional eating because I don't think that's what it is, but you do go on the road and there's just like this it's, isolated thing where nobody's watching. Yeah, it, there's some emotion to it, right? It's a fix. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. you, know, you know, and you know people like that who've gotten into don't do anything because everything is a fix for, you know, what's emotionally behind that? Why are you eating sugar? Why are you, you know, doing this? Why are you doing yeah. that? It's a, it's an emotion. You have problems, and it's, it's that like, you know, maybe I do, maybe I do, but this is good. <laughs> but I don't care. Listen, I tell people when I die, there's gonna be shit wrong with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not dying healthy. There's nothing worse than than denying yourself everything and then you yeah. still die. What is your thing? You that, what do you think? What's something like if you've got a load of money that you think you've denied yourself? Is it a car, a motorcycle? Oh, shoot. You know me, Shu. I've never been good at saying no to myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even know. I mean, there's cars that I haven't been able to afford that I would get. You, you know what? You know what's changed. You know what be the car would be the car now? What a Rolls Royce. Yeah. This is the thing. Everyone, you like know, an old and, school Rolls. No, man. I don't like. I don't like the, the new ones. The new, probably the SUV. Because here's the thing. Oh. I've always been a sports car guy. Yeah. I've had a couple of Porsches, and I've driven. Everything you know, Ferrari. This and and it's like you know, in L.A., you sitting in traffic all day. What do you want to be in a Lamborghini for? I want to sit in a Rolls Royce. A little if higher. Moving, if I'm moving at eight miles an hour on the 101, <laughs> I want to be the mo- you know what I mean. Like the yeah. guy in in the McLaren on the 101 Ooh. is the most miserable. It's hot and with it's a stick noisy. Shift. It's just, <laughs> right. The guy in the Rolls Royce is like, yeah. I'll be here. I'm in my living room. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm as comfortable as I can be in this situation. That is direct Meanwhile, you're, result. Meanwhile, you're, you're working the clutch. You're working both uh, feet and everything else. And a direct result of age has been the, the switch from speed to comfort. I'm going to uh, – you're a car guy. <laughs> I've been – my next car, I'm going to be – so I'm going to be a little selfish this time. Mm-hmm. Like I spent my life for other people, and literally. Every dime has gone to other people, kids, ex-wives, whatever it is. I am going to be selfish on my next car purchase. I want you, as a selfish man, to <laughs> admit it's selfish. What should I get? And, like, uh, I, I, I want to get something that uh, – I already have this other car. Like, I have right. a, a Tacoma that I put the dog in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be my other son's car eventually. It's a, it's a nice car. Tacoma is yeah. a nice, sturdy car. I but I want something. I go. I'm a badass. In this are you thing. well here? So this would be my question: Are you performance or comfort? Look, I want to pull up and there's they go. So and many. I want. I want to go. Who's in that car? And I. I'm going to take some out. Tesla. Tired of them. No, you that's, don't. That's no, the new that's Prius. Nothing, that's nothing. Yeah, it's no. But, it, but, it's but we get well, a Tesla. Okay, here's the problem with that. This is L.A. What? This is L.A. So there's no car you're going to pull up and they're going to be like, wow, who's that? Oh, I had you one. Know? I had one for What'd a couple you, weeks. What would you have? Wraith. 
The Wraith? Yeah, The Wraith. Yeah, the Rolls Royce. I could not. Oh, that is a Rolls, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Rolls Royce. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. See? When you get this thing, and I've never seen anything like it in my life. My son says, pull over here, right? And we go to Mastro's on the water. Yeah. You can't get a reservation. He goes, oh, you'll get one. I go, Justin, you got to He goes, just go. Watch what happens. I swear this is true. I pull up, and I go inside, and they say, I'm sorry, but we're completely booked up until 8 o'clock. I was what? And you see the valet come in and whisper to them, right this way, Mr. Shoemaker. Yeah. Because they want to park your car in the front. It's That's one, one car, car that it works. Well, it's the one car I've never driven. I've driven everything. Oh. I, I don't know if you know Adam Ferrari. You know Adam. Of course. And yeah. Adam's got the Top Gear USA. And we were talking about cars. And I told him, yeah, Rolls Royce is the only one I haven't driven. He's like, you need to. Oh. <laughs> I had it for two weeks. By the way, the, you know how you see the guy who had it before you because of the car? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was Tom Brady. Okay. Had it before me. Yeah. So, and people, like, literally stop and say, what is this you know yeah. it's so i went close to that and i here's the one i thought of what there's a reason for this too mm-hmm. i like the electric because of the carpool lane by myself okay all right all right or you could have a hybrid it's still mm-hmm. car you get the sticker yeah uh the porsche Taycan. the Taycan is Taycan? amazing i better learn how to say yeah, it it's it's <laughs> a no i have a friend and he left the Telsa, Tesla for it and yeah. never looked back. He absolutely loves it. I will say this. It it drives like a Porsche. I think Porsches are the greatest cars ever. I've, again, driven everything. A Porsche 911 to me is the single greatest car to drive. They, they're just absolutely so amazing. So it has comfort and the look. It's got everything comfort, you want. Comfort, the look, the speed, the handling. Um, you know, way back when, um, you know, when I wanted a Porsche and people were like, Oh, you know, you get that to pick up women, you did this, that, the other, you know. And I have a friend, and he's been a collector ever since I know him. He's always had two or three. He's had yeah. special ones, this or that. So I finally bought one. My first one, it was a 78 911. And I drove it, and I said to him, it's the car. He said, yeah. He said, yeah, they think it's all. He said, no, driving the car. Nothing drives like a Porsche 911. Really? It is the most, inc- you, you're you just connected to the road mm. directly well, through the low, car. Though. So if you... If you enjoy driving, it is the ultimate drive. And and he said, yeah. He said, that's what people don't get. It's about driving this. But you're a big so, guy, though. Yeah. Well, the new ones are bigger. The new ones, they, they, are. they actually made they them a lot seats bigger. They too. Yeah. They made that still for show. But they made them a lot bigger <laughs> because the, the there was a president, a CEO of Porsche, who was a big guy. He was like 6'4". Yeah. Or something, and he said... I need to fit in the car because he also realized how much business they weren't getting. Mm. The NBA, the NFL, wow. they couldn't fit. That's and he, he was like, they what are we doing? That. Some of yeah. the richest people in the world can't could, fit in our they car. They could be flexing our We're cars. We're going to add yeah. five inches of wheelbase exactly. and some leg room. Interesting. You know? Wow. But you're right. That That is an amazing, that's an amazing car. The reason I asked if your performance or comfort, that's the, the, the difference between BMW much, and Mercedes. Much. I have a BMW. I've had three but in a row. the high-end BMWs are a pretty amazing car. Really? For you, you're talking about the self. If I, 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 can I have see a five you in series. A, nah, you need an eight. An eight? You need an eight. The big coupe. That's like 150, The big it? coupe. It's like yeah, 150 it's just sticker. money. Yeah. Just money. In this case, I'm actually, <laughs> in this case, I'm going to do that. I if, never do that's just money. that's what you're talking about. No, I'm always worried about my kids that's and what education you're talking and about, stuff. You know, my the, kid can go to Phoenix, University of Phoenix yeah. online, okay? <laughs> Your dad's got to take it now, yeah. and so well, I'm glad you recommend that. I'll I'll, I'll talk to you off off yeah. uh, off the mic. I'd about say, but this. yeah, I'd say the eight series or the equivalent Mercedes, but the the Mercedes tend to be more comfort. But the big Porsches, I uh, like comfort. You know, yeah, I do like big comfort. Porsches. I think they're all pretty good performance, amazing. though, aren't they? All great for performance. Yeah, at this point. listen. Once the, you get over speed limit seventy five thousand mile yeah. at seventy five thousand dollars, you're 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 going to get something great. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. Great having you as always. Man, this went fast. I love talking to you, man. We could have done too. we could have done multiple hours. So if you ever want me back, we'll we'll actually talk about the topic we were supposed to talk about. Which we didn't. <laughs> we didn't even get into that. We didn't get into Vegas. We didn't get into anything. I got all kind of transitions going on and changes we, in my life. Do, Oh, look at that. They're giving us five minutes. They must like you. They must like you. We're in a they're bonus gonna, round. They've no, never done this with out, any guests. They're going to edit out some of the crap I talked about earlier. So, <laughs> so, Okay, important transitions in my life. My Great Dane Hulk is the best thing I ever did. My wow. dog is the best friend I've ever had. 
What he does for me, it took me a while to realize he keeps me in the moment. I want to back it up just a little bit. Yeah. In what position in life are you in? How do you find him? What voice inside of you says, this is what I need, or, di- or did that happen? I want to just back it up a little bit it to was the, the process pan- of getting. It was the pandemic. Okay. Um, I had a friend who was a dog trainer who she was like, you need a dog. You need to get a dog. You need- and then she got specific. You need a Great Dane. Exactly like you. Big, <laughs> funny, and lazy. She said, they sleep 16 to 18 hours oh, a day. Oh, wow. You, you will, she said, you need a Great Dane. And I started doing some research, and I found this breeder, and I got the dog. And, and I'll tell you the pr- most profound moment. So the breeder was up in Salt Lake City. I had to fly up and drive back with the dog. And the mm. day before I was going to get the dog, I was, like, really nervous, like, blah, blah, blah. And I talked to a friend, and she was like, he's not nervous at all. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, yeah, he's not nervous. The dog, you know, the puppy. Yeah, he's yeah. not. And and I Which brought him home. It's a key. And, yeah. you know, it took me a minute to realize. But I said, you know what? You know what's fantastic about dogs? No matter what, they're in the moment. Dogs aren't worried about yesterday. They're not worried about tomorrow. Bills. They wouldn't. There's no. They want to. They want to sit here. They either want to sleep or play. Or and eat. they just want to be in the same room with you. You yeah, know, just right. he, he'll be. I don't know how many times he'll be laying on the ottoman and I'm sitting in the chair and I'm thinking about getting up and I look at him and say, nah, it's not really that important. We're good. <laughs> uh, that was one that's been fantastic. And now, as I told you, I'm about to move to Vegas, uh, Summerlin. I've always loved the desert. The desert is spiritual to me in the way mm. some people find the ocean. Interesting. The desert has always been a place that's quiet and peaceful. I grew up in New York. It, it, I love New York. I love that I grew up there. For what it is. Loud, busy, yeah, yeah. this, that, the other. The you first adjust. Time, yeah. The first time I drove from L.A. to Vegas and I went through the desert, I was like, man, there's nothing here. Like coming from New York, the idea of nothing, and I mean nothing to nothing. those around America who haven't been through the Western yeah. Desert. Yeah. Nothing. It, it, it just kind of touched me, and it's yeah. always stayed with me. I've always loved the desert, and... I spent some time there, and I was like, you know, I want to move here. And I talked to a friend who about every five years she moves. That's her thing. I'm going to live somewhere. And I said, I wish I could move like you. And she said, well, why can't you? I said, oh, yeah, why can't I? Yeah. And I found this house, and I'm going through it now. Now, the the battle with the, the mortgage people is comical, right, because you go through the builder, and the builder uses one of these national no-name mm-hmm. banks. I said, I want to find Trump's banker who just <laughs> takes your word for it on the value of the property and gives you money. Where do you find that banker that you just say, hey, I need this much money? They're like, yeah, why not? I want that banker. And doesn't look at your past or <laughs> how, many, how many people you built. Doesn't care. You ran away from their debt. Yeah, no. we don't care. Yeah, I've been I'll paying my bills. i got a super high credit score. i got money in the bank. They're saying, eh. We want to ask five when you, when more When he was questions. president, didn't you want to say, like, when the when the IRS or whatever, or your, your accountant's saying, hey, you got to be concerned with that? No. It, the president's showing us that you can right. find these shelters, and he would brag about it. That's it's, a, it's, that's, such it's a, our president. That's the leader. The world, it's, it's such a double standard. I don't know how much longer this is going to work, yeah. this double standard between rich and poor, before people just snap. Yeah, you know, I think but, they are already. But yeah, I so so that's the next thing. I'm I I'm moving, and you know we talked about it, and people talk about the tax savings and this and that, and all of that stuff is nice. But it's really just a matter of being able to exhale, man. You can uh, chill. Better I got a there. friend. Yeah, you know my friend Billy says, man, you want to be, you want to let your shoulders drop. Mm. You know, you know that feeling when your shoulders drop, and he's like, yeah. Mm. So, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. That's the next. Do you have a bedroom for me? Thing. Uh, absolutely not. No, <laughs> no. There's a hotel not did, far away. Did anyone ever? You did everyone expect him to say that to his old buddy here, <laughs> who recommended his business manager that changes his career? Did anyone else expect that to come out a flat uh, no? Oh, absolutely. That was worse not. than the yeah, prom. I asked there's... 13 girls in the prom. That was my 14th rejection oh, right I there. Could, listen, I can lie to you. You want me to lie to you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah do. I got six bedrooms. You're welcome to one. How no. many bedrooms do you no. have? Three. Three. There That's, is a guest room, but, but you know. It's not for me. Know, it, it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's for anyone. My brother, Hulk. Oh Hulk Hulk's going to claim gonna have his room. Own, his own room. <laughs> Alonzo, always a pleasure. Alonzo Bowden, we find you on social media. And, uh, like, Alonzo Bowden.com. B-O-D-D-E-N. 
And, love you, uh, man. Thank love you. Love you too, man. Always. Thank you. Always, always proud of you. When I was in that audience, when you won the last comic standing, I was there. And yeah, I was, this... oh my God, I was such a proud little papa. You, you, saw, I mean, you saw me before that, though. I, and I saw course, you before that. Of course. You know? I, I mean, mean, that's what, that's truly. What the, that's the where the feeling days. came from. Yeah. You know what I mean? The feeling is, like, oh, there's one of my peers and, yeah. and who's risen, who's just took it to the top. And last Comic Standing, it was not an easy thing to do. You had to keep creating material. You had to shorten it, clean it. All, that's yeah. not easy. That's a that's a race that we don't run as headliners. Right, right. I've run marathons. I ain't running sprints. <laughs> and you're in there sprinting. You know, to, Thank you, buddy. And you were you're Usain Bolt, and you just nailed it every every race. So it was awesome to watch. Anyway, thanks for being here. Uh, next time, uh, just follow him, follow me, pass the word around about all of us. Comedy needs your support. Okay, I'm serious when I tell you this. Comedy needs support of people. We don't need to be canceled. You don't need to analyze every joke. You don't need to be a virtue signaler. I had a post yeah. the other day, the guy instead of just move on. You'll like the next joke. He said, Who do you think you are? Right. Like, don't analyze us. Don't criticize us. We don't need it. It's just not needed in the world. There's enough of it already. Okay? We have enough of it in our own brain. <laughs> Believe exactly. me. Exactly. Any yeah. joke you don't like, trust me, we didn't like it either. <laughs> we didn't like it either. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> so it just, just accept it, okay? Radical acceptance is such a key to life, and I hope you uh, got something out of today's podcast. I know that I'm going to go get it taken. But anyway, uh, thanks for being with us, and be with us next time on Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker. <laughs>